Ames. Thank you, Chair. Um, we're waiting on the publication of the Timpson Review. Um, Timpson being the former Children's Minister. He was set up to review initially prompted by the Roche disparity audit, um, particularly around the exclusion of which groups. Um, it, then, it, it has then had added to it in reference from parliamentary question or answers to parliamentary questions a focus to include the exclusion numbers rising, the crime and knife crime epidemic, the SEND education system, the representation of SEND children in exclusions, which is now at 70%. Um, what do you think we should be expecting from the Timpson Review? Um, he's been tasked with rather a, a lot, hasn't he? Um, I have a huge admiration for Mr Timpson. I worked with him when I was uh, uh, at Ofsted. He's got a difficult uh, job. Uh, it's undoubtedly true that uh, um, those youngsters who are in most need of support, special need, send, young, send youngsters, those on free school meals are the, are the most, most likely to be excluded. And that is, that is a scandal. Um, and uh, we need, to make, we need to make sure that the services to those children are good, high quality. It comes back to the point that was made by your, your colleague. Do, do, do I think that the cuts in education have had a detrimental effect on those services to those sorts of children? Absolutely so. Mm. And talk to, talk to any head and they will say uh, that. So this is, this is a funding issue. You can't get away. We can, we can say, yes, our money's not the complete answer. But unless you have those services for those vulnerable children, hmm. then they will cause problems in, in school. So is, is knife crime, uh, is the knife crime epidemic um, a response to a failure of SEND education in mainstream schools? I think it's complex. It's, that could be one of those things. But if you take London, I know London well because I was a teacher and a, and a head in London. London has the best schools in the country. In te if you measure, measure best by uh, progress measures and outcome measures and what Ofsted says, London has the best secondary schools in the country. And yet where are the, where are the, the, the biggest problems in terms of knife crime is London. Um, uh, if you look at the, uh, the north of England, um, highest rates of, of exclusion. I've got the top ten local authority areas with the highest rates of exclusion. They're all in the north. Hmm. Middlesbrough, Barnsley, Redcarn, Cleveland, Doncaster, Knowsley, North East Lincolnshire, Sheffield, Telford, North Lincolnshire, and Rotherham. So what is the correlation between exclusion and knife crime? The reason why we've got great schools in London, but there's a lot of knife crime, is because of the proliferation of gangs which in, in my time is it grew and grew and grew. Mm. And unless the police, and I have to say this is a police issue, because you talk to head teachers and they will tell you who these gang leaders are. Unless the police get hold of these gang leaders and the senior team in those gangs and uh, do something about them at an early stage, we talk about early intervention, but early intervention with those gangs, then this problem will continue. So the correlation between exclusions and quality of schools and... You know, but part of, that, part of that journey of early intervention includes the, the process of exclusion, which you talked about having presided over mm. yourself also. Y you are essentially feeding that chain of um, pupils, or <laughs> former pupils, into the harm's way, right? On occasions, I, you know... There will be some occasions when you have to exclude for the safety of others in the school. Somebody has become so dangerous and so persistently disruptive in the school, and because there, there isn't the provision out there, I remember this therapeutic unit that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about saved lots of children, but it didn't save all of them. Mm. And these youngsters became a real danger in the school, particularly if they were, they were associating with gangs outside the school.
So you have no option but to exclude to uh, protect the great majority of children in that, in that institution. Thank you. But it, you know, what we've seen is huge, a huge rise in serious gang violence. Carly, are you awaiting the Timpson Review as a, a moment, a silver, a silver bullet to this problem? Yeah, I, well, I hope that, you know, there are some good suggestions and recommendations that we can all follow. But again, I think it's about all of us coming together. I think um, just in terms of what Sir Michael just said, you know, we can take out these gang members, we can take out these foot soldiers, you know, we can, you know, exit them from what they're involved in. The minute we take those ones out, another one's ready to step in line. They're all ready to climb up that ladder very quickly. Um, I was part of the, um, the pilot project in Kent, the County Lines pilot project, which was an amazing experience, absolutely terrifying and daunting because I kind of thought that I'd seen and heard and witnessed everything in London, but the moment we arrived in Kent, I was like, wow, this is the next level. And a lot of that was down to the education system around our young people putting pupil referral units. When they were excluded from the pupil referral units, there was nowhere to put them. There was no funding for home tutoring. Suddenly, we had these boys running county lines, they were running shifts, they were making £200 a day, some of them, some, some of them were making £1.80 a day. But everybody was confused, professionals were confused, nobody kind of knew which way to go, what to do with these young people. Um, and I think we need clarification. I think in London, I think you're right, I think we have, do have some of the best schools, I think we've got some amazing professionals all pulling together. I think we need to consider the rest of the country as well, and this is not just a London-based area uh, issue, this is spreading out far, far, far. Mm. Mark, would you want to just respond to, just respond to Sir Michael's... Uh, this is a police matter. Yeah, so the, I have to say, I think the idea that if the police sorted out gangs, then all the problems that we're talking around about for young people, vulnerability, uh, to join as crime would, would go, I, I, I think is, um, I, I, I don't think, I don't think um, sort of meets the point that the gang culture, um, firstly, it's not a single coherent, you know, you've not got a gang and they're not gang. You've got all the different degrees of, in, of, of young people being drawn into criminal activity in all sorts of ways, whether it's about county lines, whether it's about sexual exploitation, whether it's all those sort of things. Um, and the phenomenon we see around gangs in London is, it, is the circular one around, um, yes, there's a market around drugs that will drive some of it. We've seen, you know, the, the, there's various things that happen in the drugs market that create an environment where that is attractive and financially rewarding for young people if they don't see alternatives. Um, you see the, the process, which is absolutely the heart, I think, of what of what we're talking about, the process by which young people get drawn into gangs as an alternative to other, I don't know whether it's other sort of family, other stability, other, all those sort of things that we hear about. Um, all, all the issues are kind of linked. And so I'm certainly not, I am going to say it's not as simple as the police sorted out gangs, the rest <coughs> of the problem doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't, isn't there. But in the same way as Mr Linda said, I'm not, neither am I saying this is all an education problem. This is a, this is a, the challenges we're talking about are ones that have perspectives from all sorts of different places. And so I, so I think that's, a, you know, that's kind of, um, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's as simple as if we could sort it's, it's, go behind that and say, well, if we, sort, if we sort out drug importation into the UK, then we sort out a big element of, of, of the economy that drives some, some aspects of gang culture. Um, but we know that's a huge international problem that becomes you know, it's difficult. So I think, I think we, in terms of what we're talking about, it is the role all, all the different agencies, different organisations, different groups have in working together. That's not about saying it's over to you, you your responsibility. It's a bit like the answer to Ian's question about who is accountable. Well, everyone has to be accountable for their part in, in achieving something. It's a whole Just system sort of um, on, um, on, on power and authority, um, a question about local authorities having enough power to monitor those um, kids that, that do get excluded. Um, do you, do you, is there a, a lack of power for local authorities to monitor kids that have been excluded or, uh, and, and which other agencies could do with more power in relation to this? I, for me, I don't think it's necessarily about power. Sorry, no, I think it's coming please, back yeah. down to funding again. Like you know, what what we're able to provide in terms of training. You know, really bringing in the third sector organisation. They're a massive part of this, and I'm not just saying it because I work for St Giles Trust. It's really, really important. We see the work that third um, sector organisations, mm. we see the work that they do. We see the bridges that they fill. You know, I explain to my young people 
that I am not, and I'm going to use the, you know, how I speak to them, I'm not a fed, I'm not part of the gangs unit, I'm not probation, I'm not yacht, I'm not the church, because we're from St Giles. I'm an ex-offender who works very closely with those people that's trying to provide and empower and support these young people on their journey. Mm. Um, and I do think it's important that we pull the third sector back in. Mm. And I think in terms of who is best placed to work with these young people, I think we should have almost one leading the way. We're all working together, we're all sharing information the whole time. But it might be that the social worker has the best relationship with that young person. It may be that probation, it may be that even a police officer. I work with a lot of Trident officers that have really good relationships with my clients because they've built that, hmm. because they have an understanding. They're not, you're a perpetrator, you're a perpetrator. We see you as a victim, we see you as being exploited. Now they have to use their words quite carefully because these young people, they don't want to hear that they're being exploited or that they're victims, you know. Um, but yeah, again, pulling together, I don't know if it's about power. I think it's us working from one point and, and working alongside each other. Mm. We're losing lives left, right and centre, guys. This really has to stop. Like, it has to stop. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 